Hey, you're watching After Shark, WallopPop.com's post show to ABC Shark Tank. We're sitting here talking to Lisa Lloyd by Skype. Hey, Lisa. Hi, Jason. Thanks so much for having me. Hey, no problem. Tell us about Treasure Chest Pets. Do you have one on hand that you can sort of show us what, what the property is? Do I have one? Of course. <laughs> Treasure Chest Pets are, let's see if I can back up here, are organizers that look like stuffed animals with secret compartments inside. Oh. The pillows all attach magnetically. And this one, for example, has a drawer, and she's got pockets here also on both sides of her body. Cool. And then the kids can also store on the outside. They can put their headbands, and on the feet they can put scrunchies and jaw clips. Right. Okay, so you've been selling quite a few of these, but somehow you got yourself into the position where you were in over your head. You couldn't meet the orders anymore. How did that happen? Well, it's a great problem to have, but nevertheless, it's still a problem. I started attending trade shows and exhibiting the product. It started with Toy Fair a year and a half ago, and um, the, the sales started rolling in. Um, I got my first container ordered, but unfortunately couldn't move forward with my next couple of containers uh, to handle the orders coming in, and that's when I found myself really needing some investors. How much more inventory do you have remaining? I have about uh, 1,100 pieces left, and I get orders every day. Do you believe that those pieces are going to sell through? They're already sold. I have a stack of orders sitting on my desk for fourth quarter that I haven't even put in the system. You know, ingrained in my mind like a laser are these numbers. Toys, 30 billion. Plush, 2 billion. I know this market inside out. I also know how brutal it is to get distribution. Lisa, if I invested in a toy business again, I would wake up with nightmares. Did you go to a bank for a loan? I had already been through the banks. That's how I got as far as I did. I maxed out my credit. I maxed out my house, the typical story. Yeah, yeah. and do you went through a patent process as well. Did you find that difficult? Uh, well, for me, no, because I've been inventing for almost 20 years. This is actually not my first product, and um, I have seven other patents. This right. patent originally came to me from another woman by the name of Sandra Castillo. I licensed her patent from her, redesigned it to make it commercially viable, and filed four more patents on this product. Right. Now, when you went into the Shark Tank, you, you essentially needed some funding to continue to, to, to meet all the orders that you already have. Yeah. Um, and, but about midway through, Robert Hershevik offered you a loan. He, he, was, you know, he wanted no percentage of your company, but yet you turned it down, even though that's sort of why you had gone into the tank to begin with. What changed your mind? Crazy, I know, and I think about it all the time. Um, what I believed I was, or believe I was getting, was and hoped I was would be given the opportunity to have would be a team. And my concern with going with Robert Steele and my husband, for that matter, is that we wouldn't get the team. Also, um, someone writing alone connotates to me kind of passing the buck and leaving all the responsibility up to me. And I didn't want to do it alone anymore. I was really looking for people to help me and take the risk with me, not have yet another debt that I owed. Yeah, I have to say, when you went into the tank, you looked stressed out. You even said you were tired of the long hours, you weren't sleeping well. And when Damon John said that he could make you filthy rich, the first time I saw you smile in the whole episode, you were, you were almost <laughs> overjoyed to have this burden taken off of you. Do you still feel the same way? Are you are glad to sort of have this off your shoulders? Well, I'm not, I'm not glad to hear that I looked stressed out, but yeah, absolutely. It's been very difficult, and um, in the past, I've always licensed my inventions, which just means I've given other people the right to make it and sell it, and I've never had to manufacture and handle all of the responsibility that comes with running a company basically 24-7. Most people think they're going to start a company and all of a sudden um, have more free time, and it's actually just the opposite. So I was thrilled to know that... Uh, Barbara and Damon would come on board and be the support team that I was really looking for. Well, is there a part of you that maybe just doesn't want to go beyond inventing in the future, that you really don't want to run a company the way a company has to be run? I love all aspects of running business on a temporary basis, but the day in, day out part of it is exhausting, and I'm not sure that I would want to do it again. I think that I've learned a lot. I've been consulting people for a long time on the invention and licensing side. I think I'd like to help other people do this if they're crazy enough to jump into the pool, too. Right. Damon John essentially offered something close to vertical integration. He, he could mm -hmm. distribute, he could manufacture, he could do all the manufacturing in, in, in Asia, for example, um, right. and he sort of took that burden off of you. Uh, is this a way that you'd like to go in the future from now on, find partners who can sort of take care of all that nitty-gritty? It definitely makes more sense. I mean, I'll have to play this out to know for sure if it's something I'd want to do again. Why didn't you try to get the Sharks down to a 50-50 split of your business so you could have half the control? 
I didn't understand the rules of the game before I walked in. And, um, for example, one of the things that I didn't even realize when I was taping was that the sharks have to offer at least the minimum that you're asking for before the deal can be done. You can't take any less. So Barbara had actually offered less, and when I turned her down, I thought it was because she was undercapitalizing the company. I didn't realize that the way the game works, you can't take the offer unless it's for the full amount that you ask anyway. Um, so for me, that was... That that was just what I had to do. Yeah, it was it was, it was not you were not able to make a counter offer due to the rules of the game. I, yeah, I didn't realize. I just didn't understand that. So where does the company stand now? Um, I'm still actually working on the deal with Damon and Barbara. There, I don't know that a lot of people realize they still get to do their due diligence. They're not going to make a decision to give you hundreds of thousands of dollars potentially without having the opportunity to see if you told the truth on camera. <laughs> Um, and if the opportunity is what it appeared to be when you presented. So they're still working through their, their end, doing all of the paperwork, and I hope to wrap things up with them real soon. Yeah, so not too far in the future, do you think, where this, this thing will be wrapped up for you? Uh, you know, I really don't know. I don't understand um, what's on their plate. I don't have enough information to know how long it'll take them, sure. but they have all the information they need for me at this point. Every time so have you been asked. able to meet your orders then in the meantime? It's you know it's funny. Uh, I have continued and in fact went ahead and ordered my second container um, and have sold through the second container already and it's on the water from China right now. And just told China last night that I'm going to go ahead and order a third container today because I can't, can't wait any longer for the deal. And I have built a terrific relationship with my factory and they've given me terms. Well, I imagine that after the show is now the show is aired, people will be coming to your website with a lot more interest. So hopefully, we'll be able to sell those pretty quickly. Lisa, Hi. thank you for joining us here on AfterShark by Skype. Um, if you'd like to see more videos with the entrepreneurs behind the show, you can watch them right here at wallpop.com.